your motion? That is my motion. Do I have a second? second? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Let the record show it was a 5-0 vote. And before we um, have public comments, we are going to move items number 11 and 12 up to the front before public comments. So those of you who have come to talk about those things will be able to, to do it without having to sit here all night. So I'm going to move to item number 11. In God we trust the cows on police vehicles. City Council determination. Thank you, Madam Mayor. As the Council is aware, during July 15, 2019, City Council meeting, staff was approached by Pastor Angela Prager requesting that the City of Tass be placed in Godly Trust decals under Tassie Police Department vehicle. Other agencies in the current county have agreed to do so. Um, some of them in the current county sheriff's department has left decal placement of individual deputies. Part of the direction from Council in that last meeting was for staff to re research this potential proposal, what it might look like, and what some of the issues might be floating out there as well in regards. Um, we know Pastor Frazier has a nonprofit organization that can provide the decals, so general fund money is not being used to purchase the decals for the police department fleet. Some of the issues discovered and, and presented during staff research, um, upon learning about this proposal and conversation, we were contacted by a group called the Original Model Project, and they argued via email, which is attached, that if we to add in God we trust the police vehicle, we should also add the original national motto, e pluribus unum, which is Latin for, from many one, Mr. Robert Ray suggested adding both that and the pluribus in the decals of police vehicles and potentially, according to his email, a third we the people decal as well. And as I mentioned, that correspondence is attached to the agenda. Um, there is potential for litigation um, in adding the God We Trust to city owned vehicles. There have yet to be cases filed locally in response to the adoption of decals by the Kern County Public Safety Agencies. It should be noted that the cities of Bakersfield and Chapter uh, received comments from the American Civil Liberties Union and were informed about potential cases in the future if they were to move forward with their proposals. Uh, additionally, recently, the United States Supreme Court recently ruled in favor of allowing the cross that stood at the Bladesburg Peace Cross Memorial in Bladesburg, Maryland, to remain on public land. As part of the argument in favor of the 7th decision, the justices noted the establishment of the cross since it was erected in 1925. It does not violate the establishment of religion clause given its historical significance. Uh, the court's opinion stated there was at least uh, four considerations that showed retaining established religiously expressive monuments, symbols, and practices is quite different from erecting or adopting new ones. Um, a lot of those cases involve monuments, symbols, or practices that were first established long ago, and thus identifying the original purpose or purposes may be difficult. As time goes by, those purposes associated with established monuments, symbols, or practices sometimes uh, multiply. So, for example, the Ten Commandment monuments, even if the monument's original purpose was infused with religion, the passage of time may steer that sentiment and may be retained for the sake of its historical significance or a place in common cultural heritage. Um, the message of a monument, symbol, or practice may evolve. Familiarity itself can become a reason for preservation. And also, uh, when times passage and views of religiously expressive monument, symbol, or practice, with this kind of familiarity and historical significance, removing it may no longer appear neutral, especially to the local community. So basically, time was a big part of a lot of this. In this recent decision, it, gives, uh, it rises to presumption of constitutionality. Um, the court did uh, determine by applying these principles to that cross it didn't violate the establishment clause. It could be implied, however, that establishing new religious symbols, as in the case of the proposed decals, could violate the establishment clause and removes the concept of religious neutrality when it comes to publicly owned land and assets. Um, additionally, on more than one occasion, the chief of police was contacted by Tattoo Police Department officers who expressed concern about the decals, not from a religious standpoint, but a concern over neutrality. We know police officers have an extremely difficult job and they deal with a diverse population. It's of concern of the officers responding to a conflict with folks with differing religious views, it could be perceived as unable to be neutral as a result of the ungodly trust decals on their vehicles. The current county sheriff's department, for example, left that decision to place the decals up to the individual deputies. However, the Tashi Police Department does not assign specific vehicles to officers. They are essentially part of the motor, motor pool. So adding the 
Shelf vehicles and requiring them to put officer to drive such vehicle could result in litigation. Also, the Chattanooga Police Department vehicles are by default the office and workspace for the officers on duty and an extension of the officers. The current Chattanooga Police Department policy, which is also attached, prohibits the display of political religious symbols while on duty. And that also is California Government Code Section 3206, which is reflected in our Police Department manual. Uh, I did chat briefly with the folks at the city of Bakersfield. Uh, the Bakersfield Police Department adopted their decals probably about two months ago. They yet to get them on the cars yet. They're still trying to figure out what they should look like, who's going to pay for them. Um, they have, they really don't even have a timeline for installation yet. So it wasn't as cut and dry as I think they believe. Um, this would require an agreement with a nonprofit. If we were to add the Engadu Trust decals to police vehicles, it would be necessary to enter into an agreement with Pastor Angela Frazier's nonprofit and we supply the initial decals to avoid spending public funds. Also, we need to get corresponding supply. So obviously, if um, decals fade or uh, chip and start to peel or there's uh, an accident with the vehicle, we can we can keep those alone without having to buy new ones. And it's also suggested that in the case of Mr. Frazier's nonprofit ceasing to exist, the decal program be discontinued until another supplier can be secured. Those are some of the issues and some of the uh, things we researched on a variety of levels. And at this point, that concludes my report. Staff recommends City Council determination. Are there comments from anyone in the audience regarding this? Please state your name and area of residence. My name is. <laughs> my name is Sue Selcher. I live at 605 South Snyder Avenue. It's uh, Mr. Davies' um, area. I am a practicing Christian, a leader in my church, and I pray to my God daily. However, I'm here tonight to urge the council not to print in bond we trust on city vehicles. It is a divisive model. It says, we, we believers know what is right for everyone. It separates us from them, those who have differing beliefs and different names for their gods. The motto in God We Trust was adopted in 1956 during a conservative period of time when some people decided they knew best what others should believe and do. And we still have people like that today. Our founding fathers established E. Purpose Unum as the country's first model, which means from many one. From many Americans come one America. Today, more than ever, we need to be one America, where various beliefs and lifestyles are accepted. Some cities have adopted In God We Trust as their model, but I believe Tehachapi is more tolerant, more inclusive, and accepting, more accepting than those places. Tehachapi's model is to live up. I believe we should live up, up above anger, up above intolerance, up above extremism. Please do not print a controversial motto to create division. Let's live up in Tashmi. Thank you. Oh. 
sponsorship of religious exercise. So here's my opinion. Yes, you might be trust. It's part of our American heritage. It's part of us. I think one of the reasons our country is in such bad shape is because we've kicked God to the curb. George Washington said, it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey his will, to be grateful for his benefits, and humbly to implore his protection and favor. I believe George Washington was a genius. I believe the Constitution and Bill of Rights are one of the most wonderful and beautiful documents in American history. And because in God we trust is so entrenched in our history, I believe we should keep it. And God bless our public servants and our particular our police officers. I believe they need all the blessings and help that we need. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Mayor, Council Members, I'm Pastor Angelo, and um, I would, in, in times of this, and for all the difficulties and challenges that we face, um, we all need to look to something that's bigger than ourselves. And our national model is our national model. It is on our money, it's been established since 1956. And I believe in times like this, it will help heal and bring us together. It doesn't exclude anyone. As a matter of fact, under, uh, under In God We Trust, there have been so many things achieved for all people, not just believers, non-believers. Because In God We Trust is really a patriotic call and understanding that we all have to answer to someone one day. We really do. Um, and uh, one of the things that I've done over the last few months is talk to a number of people, city council people, police chiefs, and they express their their desires and things. And they want to know, um, first of all, I, I, how does this help the department? Not even helps the department by three ways. Number one, we live in America. This is America. This has been established. Legally, Supreme Court, everything has been said. This is our national model. Number two, I think it gives us something, everybody, something to believe in and hold on to. Even if you don't believe, you still hold on to something. There are a lot of things in this country that we accept because we're here, but it doesn't mean that I have to accept it fully. It's part of being an American. We are Americans. And number three, patrioticness and our law enforcement. Those are the two things that I believe go together. We have to, in perilous times, support uh, our police officers and law enforcement. Because if we lose that, we lose civility. We lose everything. There is no safety anywhere. So I want to do everything I can to bring encouragement, hope to people, especially our police officers. Patriotism is what we have and in God we trust and in our flag. It's established from presidents on. Uh, our city official, Shannon Grove, I told her I was coming to hear her, and she said, you need to get out there and speak your heart. We talked to Kevin McCarthy uh, last week. He encouraged me as well. Uh, Cynthia Zimmer, uh, was a district attorney, she encouraged me. The Ben Fong, he encouraged me as well. I say officials are all on board with this. As I said the last time I was here, this is your moment. This is your moment. I appreciate you guys to vote affirmatively and hang up to Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Donna Nelson. I live in Bakersfield. And I am a member of In God We Trust America, which is a nonprofit organization, not with Pastor uh, Angela Frazier, but with Jackie Sullivan. That is her nonprofit, not, not uh, uh, Mr. Frazier's. Also, um, and I believe you already know he's the, uh, uh, the pastor the, for the Bakersfield Police Department. He's the chaplain for the Bakersfield Police Department. Um, another clarification that I wanted to make, there was some concerns about um, uh, lawsuits. And uh, last weekend at our uh, big event that we 
as a civil city council member, I don't think we ought to make that decision. Um, it's controversy. I think there's controversy in everything that we do. Uh, I don't think we need to add any more controversy to what we have going in our lives right now, so uh, I'm not for it. Thank you. Mr. Smith? I agree with uh, Council Member Davies. I understand everyone's position on this. It's very controversial. Believe in God, uh, Catholic. Um, at the same time, as Bill Belcher said, uh, I believe uh, that, that we should maintain religious neutrality and uh, separation of church and state is where we're at here. And I'm not worried uh, that someone defend us for a lawsuit, but you still have to consider uh, that aspect of it. That is not the primary thing, but my point of view is religious neutrality, so I would be uh, not in favor of Thank you. Um, I feel like our, you know, our country was based on a God we trust. Um, I firmly believe in that. Uh, my husband was a deputy sheriff. Should we go? Okay. My husband was a deputy sheriff. And it's okay. Had to be for 27 years. And I know on many calls that he relied on God to help them through it. They were ambushed a couple of times, and I know that he can't hear me. That's unusual. But anyway, and I know they rely on God when they get in these compromising situations. Um, a pluris unum, I think, is a neutral zone. I would like to see what happens in Bakersfield with their decision. Uh, God we trust and then go from there so um, my biggest concern is the safety of our police officers at this point thank you thank you, thank you Madam Mayor uh, as most of you know uh, based on my presentation last council meeting uh, I firmly support this situation and, uh, and God we trust. Uh, I don't think it's intrusive. I don't think it impacts other religions because um, as Angelo said, God it means different things to different people and to different religions. There's no difference on how you evaluate a Christian God versus another religious God. And having that on our police cars, uh, I totally agree, is inspirational. There are certain things that we need to bring to the community. If it's as simple as saying, in God we trust on our police cars, we need to do that. Our society today needs every bit of help it can muster. And if, it provi if this simple phrase brings security, and comfort to anybody that reads that, then so be it. It's, it's a good thing to have. And I do support this, and I will vote in favor of, uh, of proceeding with putting this on our police cars. Thank you. Thank you. Before we call for a vote, I also need to take a position and tell you all that I'm an evangelical Christian, and I cannot vote basically against God. This is a no-win situation for the entire council, but I, I would vote, I, I like the, the magnetic idea, but I do need to vote in favor of God. So, this time, do I have a motion to um, for this to be passed? I'll make the motion, uh, Madam Mayor, that we proceed in, uh, in placing in God we trust on our police person. Do I have a second? But we don't have a second. I will go ahead and second the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? No. No. All right. The motion failed with a 3 2 vote. Thank you. Um, now we are moving on to 
Item number 12, Second Amendment Sanctuary City. Second Amendment, what they might consider to be laws that impinge upon the Second Amendment. 
uh, and allowing employees to carry the weapon. If you want more research on that, I certainly wouldn't have taken any action on it tonight other than refer back to staff because that's what you want. Any comments from the audience regarding this? Oh, let me just say one other thing. The chief has a memo in your packet, which means it's very instructive if you want to take a look at that. Okay. You want the chief to speak first? No, no, no. no. My name is Safar Schmidt. I live within the bounds of Incorporated Tehachapi. Um, and so this is in regards to the Second Amendment Sanctuary City. The approval of this agenda item will serve no good purpose for the people of Tehachapi. It will require numerous hours of extensive legal research. In the past, Mr. Hedgley has been highly critical of the cost of legal work, and yet he, more than any other member of the council, requests that legal research be done and legal opinions be rendered by the city attorney. Every state in the union has been given the right by our federal constitution to enact its own laws as pertains to guns. There is no need to honor the diverse laws of other states because the citizens of California have already spoken. To accept the more liberal laws of other states extends an invitation to people of dubious character to enter our state and victimize our citizens. Too many tragedies are happening in our country as has been evidenced by the recent happenings in Gilroy, California, El Paso, Texas, and Dayton, Ohio. We have become a country in perpetual mourning. We must do what we can to put an end to our mourning. This item will advance this, will not advance this goal. I don't want to be in mourning anymore. Thank you. Could you say your name for the day? Yes, I'm the Susan Monroe and I'm the First of all, Mrs. Schmidt, you're absolutely wrong. The Supreme Court has explicitly rejected the idea that the states can nullify federal law and I have pages of Supreme Court rulings on that issue. So here we are again, stepping out of the Constitution. We're stepping on all the graves of all the people who have died and who are right. The Second Amendment is one of them. Um, I don't quite understand the issue as you were talking about it. Are we discussing upholding the Second Amendment? Or are we talking about allowing people to carry guns into the moon? I wasn't quite clear. Well, I'll tell you what I said, and then I'll put the right. word to Councilman Hedgie who brought the issue up. Right. I thought I, I thought I understood it, but maybe not. Well, this is not a challenge to the Second Amendment. It's trying to prevent challenges to the Second Amendment okay. uh, by asking uh, police, the police chief for Tehachapi and the sheriff of Kern County to not enforce those laws which impinge on the Second Amendment. Okay. Uh, now that would be some of the laws you just talked about, the state laws, and this is uh, uh, Socorro uh, talked about, uh, and, and, and so that's a question. Okay. You can't really ask law enforcement not to enforce laws. I understand that. So the legal research needed would be to find out if there are laws that can be not enforced uh, okay. without liability. Because here's what I'm going to put forth, and you tell me what you think. We have a supremacy clause that protects the Second Amendment. So when it's challenged as people don't want it, they don't want to obey it, to me that is setting up the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Schmidt brought into play all of the El Paso and all that kind of stuff. We don't have any control over the person that pulls the trigger. That can happen at any time, anywhere, and as you all are aware, bad people will always be able to get guns. And uh, so I would refer us back to a polling session, and then I, I'm sorry if I didn't understand, um, because the Supreme Court has held it up, and every single instance I have changes of versus, versus, versus with the Supreme Court upholding the third amendment. So there you go. Thank you. Thank you.
some have CCWs. We can't, we're out in the middle of nowhere. And I know, speaking with them, that this weekend, the things that happened would not have happened to that severe level if my friends would have been around. Because they would have acted in a way to eliminate the threat of violence. If we get all this gun thing, the legal, honorable citizen won't have any protection. The bad guys will be running this country. And I think we need to stand up and abide by the Second Amendment. Doesn't care, I don't care to you folks what Sacramento thinks. You're all worried about litigation in Sacramento. I could care less. This is Tehachapi. Let's take care of Tehachapi and not run scared with our tail between our legs because we think something might happen. Don't care what might happen. An armed citizen to me is a better citizen than an unarmed citizen. And I will stand by that until my dying breath. I hope you guys all consider that. And um, it's a good thing. We need United Citizens to take care of business. And don't be afraid of Sacramento. Thank you.
it's not running scared, it's running in, in direction of the right way to do it, the smart way to do it, by the law. So I'm not about to vote on any measure that tells our police department to disobey a state law or to ask the Kern County Sheriff to not obey laws around us. I understand where you're coming from, Jim. I, I agree with the Second Amendment. I will support it. I serve my country, just like everyone else who's a veteran here. But this is the wrong venue to do that. You need to go to your uh, assembly, state senators, and take care of it at the state level, not here in Tashby. That's my opinion. Um, I have to agree with Mr. Mays and Mr. Smith um, on this action. And um, I would, when I was thinking about this, I remember that we all had to take an oath of office and we all swore to uphold the Constitution of the State of California and the Constitution of the United States. And I don't want to start messing with that because that was my oath of office. And, and um, a lot of us, my son's an avid hunter. He doesn't go around killing people. He shoots birds. You know, he has guns. But um, people in different walks of life have all kinds of, of things. And we own them legally, and we have to follow the rules. And I don't want um, to ever have something on my shoulders to where I said, um, well, we we changed all that, and then some mother comes to me crying because her son got shot because of that. And, and um, I, I have to say, I, I am the last person to tell you I like California laws. But I'm, I gotta say that I have to, you know, not necessarily enforce them, but I have to stand by them. So, Mr. Yankee. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, quite the contrary, I believe that this is actually the absolute correct venue to bring something like this forward. Because as a member of a small community, when you get to the county or the state level, your voice disappears. So it is crucial that our citizens who have got concerns, if there was ever a time to be uh, in need of protecting yourself, protecting your family, based on what's happened over the last 48, 72 hours, now is the time. It's not a time to cower. Not everybody's asked to carry a gun, it's not mandatory. But if you choose to carry a gun and you do it legally, you apply for the permit, you go through the training, and you accept the responsibility. And let me know that. Uh, don't underestimate the responsibility. This is not the Old West and it never will return to be the Old West. The law-abiding citizens in our community must be given the privilege and the right to protect themselves. It's ironic that we talk about how state law is applied. Well, let me tell you what, folks. The Second Amendment is in jeopardy right now. The other thing that's, that's uh, appropriate to this conversation, we have legislators in Sacramento who have created a sanctuary state. The last time I checked, the last time I read federal statute, guess what? That's a responsibility of the federal government. It's not a responsibility of anybody in Sacramento to allow illegal immigration to occur unchecked, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is not a discussion about illegal immigration. This is a discussion about the Second Amendment. We cannot pick and choose which laws, federal laws, we want to apply and what we don't want to apply. The inalienable rights that are granted to us under the Constitution of the United States and the Second Amendment should be cherished and very, very highly regarded 
by every person that is a legal citizen in this United States of America. And I'd like to read something real quick. And I, I realize some things that I do are never really quick, but nevertheless. I don't know who the author of this is. You may have read this uh, out and about on social media, but it's worth reading and hearing again. Again, I stand behind you in line at the store with a smile on my face and a gun under my shirt, and you are none the wiser, yet you are safer for having me next to you. I won't shoot you. My gun won't pull its own trigger. It is securely holstered with the trigger covered. It can't just go off. However, rest assured that if a lunatic walks into the grocery store and pulls out a rifle, I will draw my pistol and protect myself and my family and therefore protect you and your family. I may freeze up. I may pee my pants. I may get shot before I can pull the trigger, but I won't die in a helpless, blubbering heap on the floor, begging for my life or my child's life. I won't be that victim. I choose not to be. As for you, I don't ask you to carry a gun. If you are not comfortable, then please don't. But I would like to keep my right to choose to not be a helpless victim. There is evil in this world, and if evil has a gun, I want one too. Those are strong words, folks. Again, I don't know who the author is. You've, you've maybe read this in social or on social media. It's floated around quite a bit. It's important. And I think that this body should go to the next step with our city attorney evaluating, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not in conflict with the chief of our, the, the chief of police in Tehachapi. I'm not in conflict with him. I'm not in conflict with any of our officers in the back. Law-abiding citizens must be able to protect themselves. And if it takes this body in this venue to ensure that that is a possibility for everybody that chooses to do so, we should proceed with Mr. Schroeder going forward and asking for outside counsel's input on what it would take for us to proceed. I understand that Delano right now, I'm not here to talk about Delano, but I'm going to. They're trying to declare themselves a sanctuary city at their council meeting. Well, you know what? If they can declare themselves a sanctuary city for immigration at their council meeting, well, you know what? We have a constitution behind us, and we're not going to assert the, the federal law and violate matters regarding the Second Amendment and how it applies to our citizens. We can do the same thing right here. And in my opinion, and I hope my fellow council members agree, we should do it. We spend gobs of money on bike paths, on trees, on all these other nice things in our community. And don't get me wrong, they're nice. But you know what? If it comes down to spending a few thousand dollars on protecting our constitutional rights as citizens of the United States of America, you know what? It needs to be done. And that's my position, Madam Mayor. Thank you for the time. Did you want to weigh in, Chief? Well, I believe my memo speaks for itself. Uh, the city council here has no authority to establish any ordinance requiring or requesting me to ignore state law. I am bound by state law. My authority is attained to the state of California, and I am bound by that state law, and we have to enforce those laws. Um, Mr. Hecke says that law-abiding citizens should be able to protect themselves, and uh, the existing laws allow for that. Um, we have CCWs. Um, we, we, have a, we live in a county uh, where the sheriff uh, issues CCWs pretty regularly to those citizens who deserve those, um, and I fully agree with that. So um, my position here is, is simply that the, the local city council here has had no authority in this area. 
about Madam Harris. Oh, sorry, Phil. I don't think we're debating the CCW issue. It's right. kind of over. So, but you did in your in your request suggest that we uh, have a reciprocity agreement with Arizona to do that, and that them, you know. So I'm not in favor of that either. So I am certainly, if anyone falls into the category that needs CCW, they go through the proper channels, like Mike said. Uh, whether you're in the county or the city, it's already on the books. There's nothing that we need to do further here. But we, I am not going to vote against or vote for something that we're not even allowed to do. So. Yeah, I, I do agree uh, with the chief's position. There are certain things that we are obliged to do as the government. However, we see the strain on that every single day in California. If you have a CCW permit in any other state in the union, well, sorry, let me back up. There are a handful, New York, Illinois, pick a few of these chosen states who have restrictive legislation on the books, similar to what California does. Other states have reciprocity with tens, 20, 30 different states because they have taken the approach that the Second Amendment, if it's good for somebody in this state, it's good for somebody in that state. And I, I think that as a council, we should take a position on this. A couple of these items that I asked, uh, or we discussed last, last meeting, specifically, specifically talking about our employees being allowed to uh, carry a concealed weapon if they have a legal CCW. Well, let me tell you what, there are people in the employee of the city that are out working at all hours of the day and night. If these guys in the back of the room are not available, or if it's five minutes away, five minutes folks is too late. And I, we should pursue as a, as a governing body for the city of Tehachapi, the possibility of these items to be evaluated. And I understand, Mr. Schroeder, the, the liability associated. However, there's liability associated with having your CCW. There is liability. There is responsibility, as I stated earlier. But we should take a position as a body that allows certain things that were on my list last, last agenda, and we should request outside legal input to that. And at some point in the future, we can put it to bed. But I don't think we should shortchange ourselves as a community and say that we're not going to do this, but we'll put it in another bike path. It just doesn't, there's something that just doesn't align when we're looking at constitutional rights and protecting our citizens and allowing our citizens to protect themselves with guidance and, and authority that we've granted it. It doesn't compare necessarily to a life path. And that's all I have, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Um, we'll What's the pleasure of the council? Do, do we want to make a motion to refer it back to staff again? Do we want to? We need a motion. We need a motion. Right. What are you? Well, I, I don't think it's going back to staff. It's going to go back to Mr. Schroeder, who will then go to outside council. Right. Motion to Mr. Schroeder. Yeah. You're going to be extending funds. Okay. So are you? Yeah, I would like to make a motion that we allow our city attorney to go back based on the information that he's provided to us tonight and make the minimal expenditure associated with getting an outside opinion on whether or not certain aspects of the items that I presented at last council meeting could be applied to the city of Tehachapi or should be dropped in there entirely uh, regarding the second amendment. And that, that is my motion. I apologize for being lengthy. Um, do I have a second? We have no second, then the motion fails. Motion dies for lack of Thank you. So, I have to say that I am absolutely appalled. Okay, um, now we're going to go back to public comments. We skipped them earlier, and these are comments that pertain.
pertain to things other than what we've already discussed. So are are Right. If there's something already on the agenda, we'll address that when we come to it. But this is something that is not on the agenda or something you want to bring up to the council's attention. Are there any public comments? Good evening, Madam Mayor and City Council. Um, I'm Ken Nixon, I'm the chairperson for the Tashkin Police Foundation. And I just wanted to remind you all and invite the public that tomorrow night is National Night Out. It's the night year that um, the police department and has partnered with a nonprofit um, to do National Night Out. It's the biggest one that we have so far this year. And um, if you haven't already signed up to donate blood for Houchin, um, come out, they will be there um, for people to donate blood. We'll be doing child ID. Um, there's gonna be 37 um, agencies and organizations at the event this year. And we have 900 hot dogs. So come out, grab a hot dog, um, enjoy the beautiful evening, and then Parks and Rec will be hosting a movie in the park um, at 8.30, and that movie will be incredible too. Thank you. My name is Donna Nelson. I'm from Bakersfield, and if I'm out of line, please let me know. I, um, I just wanted to thank you for your time tonight uh, going back to Bakersfield. Uh, but I did want to let you know I do have family here. I've got family to actually in in Mojave and in Roseland, actually. Uh, so uh, we were interested in what you were doing here on behalf of the family. Uh, I have six members in the County Sheriff Department, and so uh, we hear a lot of things about what, what goes on. Um, but before I say that, I just need to get a little something off. Regarding the Mojave Trust, again, thank you for your time. I do just wish that the research that was done on it, uh, they had gone to somebody that, that knew a little bit more than what, what we found out. Um, I was very disappointed in, your, in the way the vote went and was surprised by some of you. The other thing is, <laughs> As far as the CCW, absolutely the training that goes into a program for CCW is extensive. They even have classes for women. They have classes for senior citizens. And in closing, if I can say, we'd be very grateful for me to be standing next to my grocery store. Thank you. Um, Councilman Smith uh, caught my attention at the last meeting with something that he said and actually located it in the uh, newspaper. Uh, can I give these to you guys? Yeah. You have a way of endorsing the work. Yeah. 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 Uh, we're not giving them over there. This is actually it's a request to keep uh, placed on agenda for August 19th for the next meeting. Um, and the reason I'm asking that, I'm, what I'm looking for is for what council is seeking And this is actually the uh, news article from the Tashby newspaper where Greg Garrett, this is where you are saying, I'm the Tashby city manager, Greg Garrett said, I am the human resources manager. I hire, I fire, I promote, I demote, or you reviews. And I mean, I'm, I am the in-charge manager. There are several people within our organization that assist. He added that if any employees have any concerns, they're strongly encouraged to come to him to solve the issue. But well, we've done that. Come to you before, right? When there was a sergeant that sold over $30,000 in time that he didn't work. Over a three-year period. He stole that money. And instead of addressing it, because it was an embarrassing matter, he hired a private investigator and attorney to hide it. And then he started retaliating against me. And then I had to hire an attorney because I was a whistleblower and you were coming after me. But instead of addressing somebody stealing something, you opted out to hide it and cover it up to avoid your embarrassment. That was wrong. And on another topic, I did reach out to you via email. 
about Chief Kroger's comments. You cannot find my complaint. I sent that complaint to you. And it didn't just get thrown away, burned out, leaked, didn't care, came from being grabbed and deleted. That was a pretty significant complaint, wouldn't you agree? Calling our African American citizens crunchbacks, savages, pajamas. You don't see the significance there? Because that's a failure on your behalf to let this man continue to act like that. Where was the investigation on that? Was there? I don't think so. Back to your stuff. Yeah, you, you said that uh, Phil Smith said times there are committees that help participate in solving employee grievances, and it is possible that it could be used again. I was wrongfully terminated. Nobody came in and complained about me. This man hired people to go out and find people. Nobody came in, not a single person. They hired people to go out and make stuff up about me. And I shot them all down, each and every one of the allegations. And he knows it. Mr. Graff, I'm sorry that you're out of time. So what I'm asking you to Mr. do... Mr. Graff, I'm sorry. I'm just asking you, I have, I have a request inside there. Phil Smith brought it up himself. You're out of time, just sir. just look at it as an agenda item and let me know, please, and see if you're willing to put it on there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Can I spot you? Good evening, my name is Carl Garrett. I live in the Tatry, and I'm not a festival type <laughs> Thank you for approving the Mountain Festival. We didn't get to say anything, but I'm going to tell you guys, the city does a lot to promote the Mountain Festival. And uh, you guys from the Public Works Department, I can't thank you enough, really and truly, for getting out my barricades and putting out my signs and everything else. You know, we always say something afterwards, but no. Beforehand, thanks, Chief. Thanks, Herbert Lord. Thank you, Mr. Garrett. I really appreciate it. And as you know, we've got to move the carnival from the schoolyard back to the uh, field across the street. And we will be mowing that and putting both the carnival and the parking in that field. But guys, come on out. Enjoy, enjoy our Friday and Saturday. And if you really, we have the carnival booth and selling the tickets for the time that I sold the ticket. It's, it's a ticket booth scene and little kids coming on up there, hanging on to that thing, just wanting to go for a ride. Guys, I can't thank you enough. And uh, you make my job real, real easy. Thank you. Are there any other public comments? companies that live in the city. Madam Mayor, I've got my own fault. I've been out of town a lot. But I have a question to you once about the cost for the investigation and the legal fees of Mr. Hayden. Have you got an answer for me yet? I had the answer and I don't know. My email deletes itself after a while, but I believe it was over $30,000. It was $30,000 and some change. Yeah. Does the city manager have the authority to make that request about city council meeting? It's a curious question. I, I'm sorry to make what request. Does the city manager have that authority to hire an investigator and attorneys about city council approval? Yes. Did he send $30,000 to taxpayers money for quacky investigation? He was responding to federal law. Once a complaint is formed, is filed, the city has no choice but to investigate it per federal law. To continue on with attorneys or anything else, that's pretty good. Any other comments from the audience? Jim Jacobs, District 5. I'll be a little easier this time. Um, coffee with the mayor. You say, come on down, visit us, let's have a conversation. Yet, in all this time, you have never come back to the council and said what you guys are talking about, if people have good ideas. So what really goes on down there? I would like you to come back with the report, who you talk to, what the issues are, what's going on down there. Because we as taxpayers are paying for the coffee, 
I think we deserve a little feedback on what's going on down there. Sure, and how much is the coffee bill, Mr. Garrett? 20, 30 bucks. Yeah, 20, 30 bucks. But I'll be happy, I will be happy after the next coffee with the mayor to report to you. And if you want to see, I would invite you to come down. Even better. Yeah. Okay. We have, during that time period, we have 20, 30, 40 people that show up, just depending on on uh, what's going on. Is it a week before Christmas or something like that? But we have all kinds of comments, negative and positive, but I will be happy to make a report. But I also would invite you to come next time. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. Um, a couple of meetings ago, we talked about the uh, new street sweeper. And you discussed it with our public works director to publish something, and I haven't seen anything published yet. Is there some sort of problem with getting that to the public? There's no problem at all. Mm -hmm. We just received our street sweeper. We're training our operator at this point. We're going to put some decals on it as I said you to have today. So, no, wait, wait, wait. It has nothing to do with my plan. No, it does. Actually, let me finish. If we have a schedule. We have a schedule. It's the same exact schedule for sweeping that we had before. Okay. Mr. Bunch is working with our, our public works director and our operator of the street sweeper. And we have already planned a public event to share the asset. That's not the question. The question is, we have a schedule. Nobody knows the schedule. I can tell you. And you no, said no. Tuesday morning at 9 No, right? Monday morning, between 9 and 10, okay. the street sweeper goes by and my dog barks. I can set an alarm clock by it. That's just my street. You're missing the point. You guys had the conversation in council that you would share the street schedules so people can move your car. They ate up a little bit of my time. That you would publish it so we would know when to clear the streets to have our streets properly. I believe swim. that the city manager said was we are going to have that out soon. Is that correct? Now he said he's going to paint up and have a pretty little display. For you know, I, there's no reason to be rude about this whole thing. We'll, we'll get control here. I want Mr. To. Marsh and I have discussed a schedule that could be published for the street sweeper. However, we decided that in everyone's best interest, it probably wouldn't be a good thing because if we publish a schedule and the street sweeper has an equipment failure or he is busy somewhere else, then you don't street sweep, sweep that street. It's a problem. Right now, our street Not sweeper, if that, can I finish? May I finish? Right now, right now, the street sweeper does an amazing job. We have an amazing employee that sweeps the streets. We're gonna keep it that way unless I'm directed other ones. You're out of time, okay. sir. Your time's up. Why did you reach out to pause? Your time's up. Your time is up, and that's none of your business. Your time's up. You're not at the desk here. You're not paying attention to her. I am telling you, please sit down. Your time is up. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank I just have a question about the airport, the whole thing. So, um, can I uh, be, or, uh, is there any information on the taxway realignment and the range issues that were, uh, or the EIP funds that we were uh, able to get? Has that been settled, canceled? I, I will refer that to uh, actually our airport manager. So we just uh, got our closed up documents to the FAA for the environmental assessment. We did receive that, that is posted on our website. Um, and now the next step is the design phase, as you know, back in December, um, we sub submitted our pre-application. So we have to get word back from the FAA that that pre-application has been approved. And once that happens, then we'll move forward to the design phase. Thank you. So how long is all this going to take? The entire process is, will take several years. Our design phase will take probably two years, and then the construction uh, there will be two phases of construction, which will be another few years. So. And is there anything going on right now in airport improvement of any sort? I'm sorry, what was that? Any kind of airport improvement going on 
right now? And this is what we're doing right now with those funds. Oh, it does. So there's nothing like it. Oh, uh, one, one thing we are doing, um, we did receive a new fuel terminal. Um, so it's, there's a little bit of process with that with our software company and the uh, installers. So uh, we are putting in a new fuel terminal and it will be within the next few weeks. Uh, all the tenants will get uh, information on that. Thank you. Thank you. And then one last question about the Patty. The Patty has been out of service a long time for tonight. Any information on that? Still out of service, as you know, the FAA uh, did do a flyover for us, did agree with uh, Mr. Viviano, who brought that to our attention. Uh, so they are still out of service, as you know. We do have to vote for that. Not just one last comment. If she has made a number of political stickers on cars and country trust, you might as well take them, take them when you got off there. They call them when you know, the county pockets, everything we own says it's not in trust. And that's why you would be afraid to put the stickers on the cars. I think if I was a policeman, I'd be feel safe in the vehicle that said that. And in the vehicle that doesn't have Thank you. Any other comments from the public?
Uh, I'm sorry, you're just, almost at the end. I understand that. That's all right. Um, have all the hangar inspections been completed in the city? All inspections have been done aside from those who refuse inspection. Are, are you allowed to refuse inspection? You're, you're out of time. Well, we will be addressing that. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? You've already. Is this going to be something else besides? Oh yeah, different, 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 different subject. Yes. Joe Jacobs, you get it. Adam there. He only gets one shot. He's I'm sorry. This is public. Otherwise, everybody will okay. coming up with new stuff. Why is legal jumping when you should be? Because I don't pay attention. That's why. Please sit down. 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 Please what does it say gets one shot? What was that? I just did this to you. What does that mean? That means enough out of you. What does that mean? That means oh, you bet I will. Come on. Yeah. Okay. Don't you put your finger at me like that, young man. Oh, yeah. Can you tie my water? Oh, yeah.
So I will make a motion to uh, proceed with uh, paying the uh, disbursements as recommended by staff. Um, and that is my motion. Got a second? I'll second it. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Let the record show us a 5 0 vote. Uh, number six, disbursements and bills for RSI Petroleum for July 10th, 2019 through July 29th, 2019. Madam Mayor, I need to recuse myself because I'm an employee of RSI Petroleum. on that because RSI is a sole source con uh, contract that I do not believe has been bid out to uh, any other uh, companies that are in the fueling business and therefore I will not participate in a vote for a sole source contract for somebody that has not been through a bidding process. So I will abstain on my vote. Okay. Um... All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, one abstention. And one abstention. And three, yes. Yes. Okay, Mr. Hickey, number eight. No. Okay, number eight. Um, number eight is complicated. So, we are talking about let's see, the, the debt policy to satisfy requirements of yes. uh, 1029, SB 1029. I've read through this entire uh, document um, as I've done thousands of times before with documents. And the first thing that jumps out at me is the difference, just so the public knows, if you can see that screen up there, if you look at the very first paragraph, the, the last sentence, uh, it says, Tehachapi Public Financing Authority, the successor agency of the Tehachapi Redevelopment Agency and the Tehachapi Financing Corporation. When you actually get to the resolution that we have here, it adds, and city-formed assessment districts and community facilities districts. Well, I don't know if that was intentional or unintentional to leave that out of that header up there, but I'll tell you what, as a taxpayer in this town, I have a little bit of a concern when I see things that are written that is made public that everybody has the ability to read, and when I get to the resolution, it's different. The significance is the city form assessment districts, folks, are the taxes that you pay. Those special districts, lighting, drainage, sewer, uh, 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 lighting, well, nevertheless, they, those special districts are significant because those are the dollars that you folks are paying. So I think it's very, very important that we all be on the same page when we see it on the header, when we see it on the cover page for a discussion on resolution, it should be verbatim on the resolution. No, it shouldn't. Well, Mr. Schroeder, I'm sorry, I disagree with you. No, because, listen, well, well, listen, we're gonna get into semantics here. No, no, you know, you, add, you, add, you, add, you, add, you add three items, no, no. and then the fourth item you leave out. You're, you're misrepresenting this. Well, then why don't you explain it? I will be happy to. You got a summary of the, of the resolution in that first paragraph. You don't have a verbatim. You gotta go to the resolution to find those other things. This resolution doesn't set any taxes. It's a policy. It's a policy. Exactly, it's a policy. It's a policy. And let me tell you what, when you make three of those items very well visible in a page and you leave the fourth one out, it has nothing to do with it. Oh, it has a lot to do with it. Has nothing. You know what? Oh, well, it has a lot to do with it. But I'll, that's your opinion and I'll stick with mine. I might note that those lighting districts and things, not everyone pays for those. That is correct. Thank you, Madam Mayor. 
If you get to, uh, I don't know, it's, it's page 82 of this uh, document, and I don't know if anybody else follow along or not. I know the public doesn't necessarily have a copy of this unless you burned the agenda and brought it with you. Acceptable uses of debt and proceeds of debt. And I realize this discussion is talking about things that a lot of people may not follow or be aware of. But when you're talking about the uses of debt, the proceeds of debt, when I get down here to the bottom of one of these sections, and all, and it says verbatim, although not the primary purpose of the financing effort, project reimbursables that include project planning, design, engineering, and other pre-construction efforts, project associated furniture, fixtures, and equipment, capitalized interest, original issue discount, underwriter's discount, and other costs of issuance. If you understand that paragraph, I do. So do I. So do I. Are you, you, you don't think they do. I, I have a concern when it comes back to this paragraph applying with applying to how debt is used and the proceeds of that debt are applied and what they're eligible to be used for, there's a little bit of a concern there. Can I um, interject something, sure. sir? Um, Mr. Garrett, will you please explain to us why this is on the agenda to start with? We have, uh, sorry, relevancy? Excuse me. It is relevant, actually. We want to make certain that we manage our business correctly. We have policies and procedures, um, financial policies and procedures, debt policy is one of them. We thought it would be best to put it all in one document, one policy for the council, for the citizens, for staff, for everyone to make certain that if we do enter in, into debt, and we do from time to time, um, we, we do it correctly. So every time we, we enter into debt, for instance, uh, we enter into debt to improve our wastewater treatment plan, there are very specific rules with that debt or that loan. This policy is a broad policy. Uh, the item number four that Mr. Henke um, uh, read, read from is one of many policies, one of many examples of what debt can be used for. Uh, there's some before and that and, and several after. Um, but specifically the debt that we enter into, if we ever do, is there are specific rules. This is a very broad policy. So we felt it was very prudent to bring it to council so that you could understand um, what we do, why we do it, how we do it. Might I mention it's going to be budgeted anytime we ever put ourselves in debt. Council will approve that debt. Council approves the check on, so on and so forth. So many, many checks and balances. Um, and and the, uh, the the item here is um, issue, you know, their issuance costs for debt. It just it's, it is very complex, you're right. But this is a broad stroke of what we can and can't do. And we already do this, quite frankly. Thank you, Madam Mayor. On page A3, paragraph B at the very top, refunding, refinancing, or restructuring debt, including without limitation the refinancing or advanced funding of city pension obligations. Subject to refunding objectives and parameters that are discussed in section G. Well, let me tell you what, I get a little bit concerned when I hear about anything associated with the ability to tap into pension funds. We all, and I, and I say tap into, either on the plus side or the minus side, it doesn't matter. Anytime you read or understand anything associated with your pension, and the contributions that are made by you out of your paycheck or by a municipality as a contribution to your retirement, 
and you see paragraphs that are associated with funding, refunding, doing some other things with your pension, that should be further evaluated, further explained, because I, as a council member, will not condone any playing with the employees of this community's pension. And I say playing, I'm using that word loosely, but when I read it in black and white here, and I understand what this says, uh, it's a concern to me as a council member. So, um, if I may, I would like to make a comment on Mr. Hecke's concern on utilizing uh, city's pension obligation funds. First of all, uh, this money is with the CalPERS, and the city is not allowed, never ever can touch that money once we deposit it into CalPERS account. So if this is not a play money, first of all. Second of all, uh, city has unfunded liability. I'm sure that um, you have heard about that. All cities, many cities have unfunded liability, which means as of today's date, city has over $4 million uh, unfunded liability as of today's date. And that money, city, uh, the, the current rate, by the one right is 7.3%. Um, 7.5, their, um, their actuary is being calculated. And so there are certain cities, they do go out, issue bond at a lower rate, and they do use that money, the bond proceeds, to pay off unfunded liability, and this is the case that we're talking about. So, city is not dipping into any employee's retirement money, never. That is not allowed, period. Yeah, I, I understand. Thank you, uh, Ms. Trump. I understand that once that contribution contribution is made to CalPERS, it is out of our hands. Up until up until the point where that fund uh, is that not correct? This witness? No, I'm sorry. I don't believe it is. But you finish, and we'll let Ms. Chung answer. Well, if if you feel that I'm misspeaking, please uh, feel free. To, I believe uh, that all money in a city or any other public entity is put into account, and I don't believe that our. Uh, CFO would be able to touch that money and do anything with it without breaking the law. That's why I'm shaking my head. Okay, well, no, that's fine. Uh, because I think it's a good dialogue because I'm reading what it says and I'll read it again. Refunding, refinancing, or restructuring debt, including without limitation the refinancing or advanced funding of city pension obligations. So, if I may. Uh, mayor. So uh, once that is issued, uh, in a typical way, every 10 years the bond can be refunded. It is the same, uh, same method as refinancing your house. When interest rate is favorable for the city, so it can be funded. So it's not refunding when we're giving the money back. It's just as if we are refinancing the, refinancing, refinancing the outstanding debt. So not to be afraid of the word of refunding. Yeah, thank you. But this particular paragraph is specific to the employee pension fund. No, it just, it just simply saying, including without limitation. So it's, that can be done if we have ever issued, although it is not recommended, issue bond to pay for unfunded liability for the retirement uh, plan, then city has liberty if city feels that after 10 years of the bond life, bonds is typically 20 to 30 years of life. And after 10 years of its bond life, and then city uh, have recognized that we can save some um, the, the interest, the payment money, due to the lower interest rate, then we can go ahead and refund it. So that's what it's simply saying, is not limiting, you know, without limiting the, uh, the, uh, the bond outstanding for unfunded liability of cover, I mean, the um, retirement fund. Okay, thank you. On page 810 of this document, 
paragraph two, which is up at the top, it talks about derivatives. We all may recall derivatives. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Orange County, I don't know, 15 or 20 years ago, got into the derivative market. Does anybody recall what happened to Orange County 15, 20 years ago? They went bankrupt because of bad investments that were made in the derivatives market. So, I would like to read and I would like to propose a change to this particular paragraph that says, and this is, this is a, uh, a condition of my uh, accepting this document. Derivatives, the use of certain derivative products, products to hedge variable rate debt, such as interest rate swaps, may be considered to the extent the city has such debt outstanding or under consideration. The city will exercise extreme caution in the use of derivative instruments for hedging purposes and will consider their utilization only when sufficient understanding of the products and sufficient expertise for their appropriate use has been developed. A comprehensive derivative policy will be adopted by the city prior to any utilization of such instruments. And what I would like to add at the end of that sentence, and will be approved by the city council before proceeding with the process. This council is responsible for the people's money. And if we are dabbling or going into an area of derivatives that have a, I understand them, I understand the payback on those derivatives, but I also understand the concern or the shortfall should something go drastically wrong. And I think that this council needs to be fully responsible that, of that, not as much so as the department heads. It has to lie on the shoulders of this council. And I have no further, All right. I have no further uh, comments on that. Thank you. So I want to make um, something very, very clear. City Jansby is not looking to refinance in bonds. We're not looking to dabble in the derivative market. We're just creating, we're bringing several policies into one clear and concise policy. We would never and could never, ever, sell on or dabble in the derivative market without the city councils. So that goes without saying. We can certainly put that in, but I think you put that in at every other paragraph, quite frankly, because the financial decisions are recommended by staff, approved by council, every single time, 100% of the time. We don't go be alone with that approval. We just don't. We cannot. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, well, I, I think that's great. So if we're not ever going to go down the path of using derivatives, let's just X that whole paragraph out of this document, and then I'm happy. Go ahead. <coughs> Me. Mike Hopper, City Dashie. It seems like we're spending a lot of energy over a policy. Every policy that gets done in the city is approved by the city council. Every policy, every spending decision is approved. If you're worried about pensions, make sure you're fully funded. Make sure you budget and fully funded pensions. It's not a matter of the end of having to take out a bond. <clears throat> Why do we need to have all this discussion over a policy on how we're going to use a manager debt? And to say that, oh, well, I don't believe in that, I guarantee almost everybody on this council has a oh, vast debt. So there have some worries to say that. There are big projects that we will have to do in the future as the city is growing. We are talking about expanding 12,000 homes to save grants. That does not come without growth in our 
streets and infrastructure. And so somehow we're going to have to pay that. And to think that next year you're going to be able to fund a widening of Valley Boulevard, a widening of Denison, a widening of Curry without any debt is, is a fairy tale. So we need to have these policies in place so that we can effectively manage our city and grow our city responsibly. And sometimes that doesn't hurt that. Nobody wants to go down that way. But you also don't want to pay taxes. So some, something has to get. We have to have that money. So I would say that we don't need to put in the city council. And I respectfully disagree with you, Mr. Pecky. Thank you. Any other comments from the audience? I just want to thank Anna, your, your department, senior your staff, everybody involved with coming up with these kind of policies. They are very complicated. I don't have a problem with the, the overview summary because in the, the, uh, the resolution, it's all stated there. I would say I'm very pleased the way the city manages its debt. For example, our police department, that building was used, I believe, with almost in-house funds, correct? We did not have to go to the open market and pay a large interest rate to someone else to a bank. We borrowed from inside fund, from one fund to the next. You got a, a sewer fund or a, a water fund that doesn't need that money at the moment. We utilized it in-house and paid it back so that the, all the funds were whole. But we didn't go on the open market. And who benefited? The taxpayers of the city. We've had a very, very conservative management style in the city, which has concluded in very good uh, reserves for our citizens without going overboard with reserves and having to uh, charge uh, the, the rates are, are such that we don't have to overcharge for water or sewer. They're right on target for engineering studies. But our debt management policy stands for itself. We've had other cities that have had layoffs, cutbacks. They go into dire straits when the market goes down. When the market goes down, we are ready. We just status quo, but we have our reserves because of very sound fiscal management. And I'm very proud of our staff to know that. And unless there's another unless there's another discussion, I'll make a motion uh, on staff's recommendation as presented, no changes. Do I have a second on that motion? I'll second it, Madam Mayor. Discussion? Okay. All those in favor of adopting the debt management policy, say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Let the record show it was a 4-1 vote. Number nine, Mr. Hennedy. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Budgetary and financial policies is the header on the agenda item. And the only the only question that I have comes up on page nine. Paragraph 14. Grants will be sought as appropriate and with suitable oversight to ensure compliance. So is that the compliance like uh, we saw with the airport truck? Is that the compliance that we saw with the motocross track? So I would like to better understand what this type of compliance paragraph means and whether or not there will be outside oversight, outside oversight, an outside committee that will look into this, this grant issue, because we spend a lot of time writing grants. We spend a lot of time applying for those grants. And then when grants are looked into, and there's a bunch of fictitious material found in that content, well then, you know, uh, yeah, there needs to be some oversight. So, I would like to see 
under, under policy here, it says the city will pursue grants that are consistent with city priorities, and when the benefit of the city substantially outweighs the cost of application and administration and the risk of unintentional non-compliance. Unintentional non-compliance. We, as a community, we as a city, have to ensure absolute compliance. If we are going to apply for grants, which we do, we need to be absolute in our findings and in our application, and it has to be absolutely accurate. That's my only comment on this particular item. My mother is Stephen Tatsby. So let me get this straight. It can be unintentional uh, non compliance for gun laws that you don't want to hold people accountable for, but and you don't you have a problem with spending four thousand dollars to remove people to come and spend money in our town in Los Angeles. But you're willing to pay to set up a committee because they don't think anybody's gonna volunteer to do this for free. Oversight for oversight, and there's a cost for that oversight. And you want to spend the money on that. You think that's an adequate use of our taxpayers' money? That's questions right there. Thank you, Mr. Hector. When you have personally observed inaccuracies in grant applications in the past, and requested corrective action to clarify those issues that falls on deaf ears, Mr. Buffer. How do you handle that through the mayor? You make a complaint with the city. Sorry? You make a complaint with the city or you can go to the, if you think that there's a whistleblower. Uh, well, it's interesting that you should bring all that up because ironically, a lot of that doesn't work very well. So, therefore, we need to have outside oversight on how this process is being administered. And I'll tell you what, there are people in this community now that are watching every single grant application. I that get that, Mr. Okay, well, thank you very much for getting that, Mr. Mumford. It's important that the accuracy be 100. Your job requires accuracy. My job requires accuracy. Well, let me tell you what. If we're going to play in the accurate world, let's all be accurate. That's all I'm asking for. And I don't think that's too much to ask for because we have within the walls of City Hall the intelligence to do this stuff the right way all the time, every time. Okay, and if we're going to ask for accuracy, let's ask for accuracy with our gun owners. And if you broke the law, let's hold them accountable, which is what you do not want to do. Okay, well, we're, we're changing, we're, we're talking to Thank you, apples sir. and oranges here. Right. Thank you, Mr. Buffer. Peter Grassi, I see what Councilman Eddie is saying. I mean, there was criminal activity, and, and it needs to have some oversight. And look at what happened. You should have a committee. And to sit there and say that nobody will do this for free is absurd. I'll do it for free. I know hundreds of people. You, you can laugh about it, but you're probably one of the most people who need to be watched. But there's plenty, of, there's plenty of people who will do it for free. You can laugh, laugh right away. But there's plenty of people who do this for free. And if you don't take that step, it just enhances what everybody's already thinking about you guys. You need to listen to them. Thank you. I would like to point out, as long as we're talking about accuracy, that we were totally exonerated on the airport pickup. There was a lot, a lot, a lot of money spent that didn't need to be spent. We didn't even take the grant. We paid for the truck ourselves. The district attorney, excuse me, the um, district attorney was never able to file any charges. Everything was dismissed, am I correct? And as far as the motocross, 
That was a good brand. Somebody decided afterwards that they didn't want the motorcycle motocross track, and everyone threw a hissy fit, and so we didn't do that either. There was nothing criminal in either of those cases. And you can all roll your eyes at Mr. Graf. If it wasn't criminal, it would have never went to the DA. Mr. Graf, if you want to say something, you need to come up here. All right. If it wasn't criminal, it would have never gone to the DA, so explain your comment. Oh, I will, but you're done with comments. You just told me to come up here. Okay, we're finished. I apologize for doing that. I got the, queen, I got the Queen's wave off. Yeah, that's right. Mr. Uh, Schroeder, would you please explain things going to the DA? Uh, charges were filed, misdemeanor charges, and after a year of investigation by the DA's office, they were dismissed, and those who made the charges were considered to be um, just people who were dissatisfied with the airport. And uh, so, no, there were no convictions, there were no trials, and it was all summarily dismissed. Thank you. Do you have any other comments, Mr. Hickey? No, are we uh, going to be able to put something in, uh, in this paragraph talking about grant oversight, or is that going to remain as written and as presented? <laughs> Is there a need for anything else other than the document presented? I do not believe so. We actually have three grant application requests on the agenda for you this evening. They're in your packet with the full, the full information data behind it. I would just like to again congratulate staff for what they do with the grant applications. We're for, very fortunate in this community that uh, we get more grants per capita probably than most of the cities in Kern County, if not the state. Uh, and it's our money going out. We didn't have to apply for a grant to get it back. We do a very good job of getting our taxes back. So I will make a motion to approve this document. <laughs> I'd like to make further comment, Mr. Smith, Madam Mayor. As an example of the need for oversight, Using your example, we have a grant application for trees. That grant application for trees was for 474 trees. I have a piece of paper here that's on the docket for tonight that's now talking about 400 trees. All right, I realize we're talking about trees here, folks. But is it 474, which we applied for in the grant, or is it 400 that we're going to talk about tonight? That's an example of the oversight and the accuracy that we need as a community. And I would strongly suggest, I will gladly volunteer, I'll volunteer to assist with this oversight, if so asked. And I'm sure we can get other members in the community to participate in this, if asked. We have free ad hoc committees all over the place for things related to what's going on in our community. We need that oversight. Thank you. Um, we have a motion. Do I have a second? We moved and seconded for the adoption of the existing budget and financial practices. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? If there's no further oversight to that line item, I oppose, and it is a no vote from Council Member Hedy. Thank you. Did you wish to discuss item number 14? Sure, why not? So, talking about 400 trees or 474 or whatever we're going to talk about here tonight. I understand what this agenda item is, and I do not have any disagreement with the the uh, agreement between us and the uh, water district. However, my question remains: Is it 400 trees? Is it 474 trees? Is it something in between? Is it something that we don't know about? What is the number that we are paying for? We were granted nearly a million dollars, and you guys may remember it was very uh, adequately 
reported on October the 8th of 2018 by the Tehachapi News how Mr. Wallstrom and I voted in opposition to that particular item because we could not get the facts. And we were portrayed as the bad guys. Yeah, we're against trees, we're against shade, we're against green, we're against all this stuff. Well, no. Former Councilman Wallstrom and Mr. Hedge here are all about financial accountability. We either know it or we don't know it. If we're going to apply for grants and we're going to use a number of buying trees, well, let's stick with that number. Otherwise, let's pick a number that we can all stick with and agree on and we don't forget about it. So that's my only comment. I don't have, I don't need an answer, but it's, it's, it's blatantly clear over and over and over again to re review some of this stuff. You know, that's why we were elected. That's why the council was elected, is to review this stuff and understand what's being presented. And it is our obligation that we do that for those people out there. And, um, I just wish that we could tighten things up a little bit, make sure that we're uh, accurate in all of our reporting and our documentation, and let's carry on and get down the road with this stuff. Let's do it to the best of our ability, because we can. We're good. We're good at what we do, but we need to maintain that level and not have shortfalls like this. I don't have any other comments on that, and um, hang on. <coughs> Since we took it off 10, I would prefer to have staff report before we make comments. Yeah. So you might be able to explain. Sure, Bertrand. <laughs> um, um, yeah, the answer to the question is, uh, in terms of compliance, is we intend to fully comply with the California Natural Resource Agency's rules and regulations when it comes to the execution of this record. Uh, the original grant application was for 474 trees. There has been no purposeful attempt to change that number down to 400. I think my staff, who I asked for parents at OU, changed it to 400 um, in order to simply make it easier to pronounce the items that were done. The grant rules do not require that we plant exactly 474 trees, that instead we maintain the intent of the grant application. I, I haven't even done the design yet. Their first step and requirement from us was that we secure sufficient documentation for their sake that we have control of the properties that we listed in the grant application to receive trees. This is the one piece of property that we needed to provide some documentation to them on. There were four sites, as you guys recall, planting on Curry Median, on Valley Boulevard, uh, <laughs> on Curry and Mountain View, on Tastry Boulevard next to the new bike path out to Loves, and then Antelope Run. We own the other three outright as public right of way. This one, they wanted some documentation formally signed by TCCWD and ourselves saying that we could plant trees there. So that's the purpose of tonight's MOU. Um, the design has not been completed yet, and I think that was the case I made to you, Mr. Henke, in the meeting that night that you spoke about with Mr. Wallstrom, is that it's very difficult, uh, given public contract code requirements, that I take the lowest bid, that I will know exactly what something will cost two years before I go to get a contractor's bid for it. And instead, we make estimates. Uh, so I apologize for the uh, lack of clarity on the 400 and the confusion that it apparently created, Mr. Hedke. There is no change to the scope of the project between the initial application that was presented to you and tonight that was intended. There was no intended change. Uh, the scope is still 474 trees. Um, but in my opinion, uh, what we're presenting tonight, which is an MOU and not a full contract, uh, still achieves the goals that we have. And so my recommendation is that you approve the memorandum of understanding between the city of Tashby and the Tashby County County Water District to plan and access trees along the Antelope Run bike path and pedestrian path and authorize the mayor's summit. Thank you, Mr. Schlosser, for the explanation. Uh, it looks pretty straightforward. It's going to be a very good project uh, that the citizens of the Tashby like trees and bike paths and all those things and make their way of life a lot better. We have a lot of uh, tourism and stuff from outside. Every weekend you see more and more cyclists that are not city residents coming here, spending their money in hotels and restaurants. And uh, I think the benefits are, 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 are very good for the community. So if there's no more uh, discussion, I'll make a motion to approve a 
is great about coming out and patching and doing all that, but anything you can do, there's so many kids that walk on that street and um, mom's pushing strollers and they are in the street with potholes and everything else. So I would just encourage you to um, move forward with this. Thank you. Any other comments? Council? No, I'm just very happy with another successful grant application. They are money, that our taxes that are going somewhere else and now coming back, and specifically this street, this street. So this will include the uh, curb and gutter, uh, or just the asphalt. The ATV project does that. The, this is purely asphalt. This is the asphalt. The other one will be ATP being back to the transportation plan. It's an acronym. It's something else that, that goes to the different council governments, but I'm very happy to make a motion to approve this. Do I have a second? All seconded. Moved and seconded. All in favor of um, the Regional Service Transportation Funding Grant application, say aye. 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 Opposed? Let the record show it was 5 0. The next item, um, Mayor Council members, is a similar item. Uh, it's a congestion mitigation air quality program funding grant application and resolution. So this acronym is CMAQ, C-M-A-Q. Uh, part, of, part of the current problem, part of my world is alphabet soup to an extreme, but anyway, um, so I apologize for that. The purpose of this competitive grant program, um, that's different, our city is not competitive, meaning they give us an allocation as long as we use it in a qualified way we're allowed to have it. Competitive grant applications mean there's a pot of money and we have to succeed over our competitors to receive funding for our projects. Uh, CMAC is a competitive program that comes out every couple of years. Kern County gets a very large quantity of CMAC money uh, because it is directed in proportion to air quality issues to various counties across the state. And obviously, since Kern County has some of the worst air quality in the state, they receive some of the largest amounts of money. Uh, anyway, we don't always apply for CMAC money, not every cycle. We didn't last cycle. The cycle prior, we applied for and successfully obtained a park and ride funding, which we just uh, completed. Uh, hopefully to everyone's satisfaction. Uh, and so this time though, we would like to, uh, staff is proposing that we attempt to obtain a grant to extend Pinion um, from its current terminus near Brandon Lane, east out to Denison Road. Uh, the basis of the application is that um, some paving of dirt road applications have been successful in different places here in the county. Um, and so that is the basis of our, uh, our argument for a grant is, is that this uses a dirt road and it produces pollution uh, from an air quality standpoint as a result of the dirt road. And in addition to that, we have congestion issues on Parallel Valley Boulevard that we might be able to reduce congestion mitigation by, uh, by extending the uh, Our estimate for the project is that it's a $1 million project. Um, we are required to match 11.5% roughly of that. And so that is the proposed project. Uh, my recommendation, therefore, is that you adopt a resolution authorizing the filing of an application for congestion mitigation air quality program funding and committing the necessary local match and stating the assurance to complete the project. And that concludes my report. Any comments or questions from the audience? Council? Is the Sage Ranch project going to be adjacent to it? Uh, yes, so the proposed Sage Ranch project, which has not reached planning commission, so and since there's a planning commissioner here, we'll, we'll, I'll be short on details for the sake of propriety. Uh, but yes, it extends up to opinion. Uh, yeah, that's actually already been presented today. But um, this project is not proposed to fully construct opinion in terms of its full width and entirety curve to curve, yeah, as you're saying. Uh, it proposes to produce just enough road to produce vehicle lanes and big and controlled sol uh, shoulders. And to reduce that. Yeah, to reduce that. Because we have to stay within that limitation, that purpose. If we were to build the whole thing, then we would rightly be skewered for going for something outside the boundary of the grant application. And so if Sage Ranch were to build their portions, they'll, they'll have to follow or the staff would be proposing that they follow standard protocol for constructing next to an incomplete street um, when it becomes their time to do so. Will we 
didn't have any reimbursement because we put the, the travel lanes in. That we uh, not only, if the road's ready, yeah. whatever portion is ready, if you come in as a developer, we just make you do what is necessary to complete it. And if it's if we fail the grant application, then they may have some more expense right. to do, depending upon how the traffic study is analyzed in the EIR. So, but that's a while down the road. In the meantime, we did travel lanes and we reduced congestion on that to get it up there. So that's, that's a good project. The city typically does not build roads. When there's development, a developer puts money in. Um, when people buy a home, they have to put money into uh, a, a fund for streets and roads, fire and safety, those kind of things. But typically, the developer is responsible for building the, the roads that, they're, that are in their uh, development, and then they dedicate it to the city. So you folks and us folks up here aren't paying for the streets that are in the future. We've already got our streets, unless you want to buy a house in the new development, then, then you get to buy one of those streets. At any rate, this is a good use of money. It is grant money. It's still our money that we got back. So thank you again. And any other comments? If there's not, I'll make those. May I also, could I just also say too, I always recommend from my position as development director is that you never know what the market is going to do to a housing development. Right. You know, if it doesn't right. happen, or that these things happen all the time, actually. Yes. I mean, we all know that here in Kern County. There's lots of housing development. You know, and so this road is, in staff's opinion, of great enough circulation value in the community that we should pursue the money necessary to build it regardless of what happens with development. So um, that's that's why we're bringing this right. We see a lot of plans, but we until it's built. Yeah. That's the plan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a little contrary to what Phil's position is, and I think that it is uh, very suspect that Pinion is extended uh, and paved with their quality uh, money when we know that a developer is going to come in and be required to satisfy their obligations on uh, on streets, curves, and gutters, sidewalks, it's the sidewalks, et cetera, et cetera. And I just have reservation when I see a project like this proposed in an exact area where we know a developer is coming. It just becomes very suspect. And I, uh, I, I have reservation agreeing with this. Yeah, sure, it's nice to cut down on dust and dirt and everything else is blowing in the air, but at the same time, we know this project is coming. We know it's coming. At least that's what it says on the paper. And, um, you know, for us to take a position of obtaining monies specifically to prepare a perimeter road for a known development or a proposed development, I think we're, we're going out on a limb a little bit. That is the obligation as was stated. That's the obligation of the developer, and I think that if, uh, if the developer is committed, we hold off on doing this and we combine some things in the future to make it a global uh, process project rather than putting asphalt in under this uh, this money and then having to tear it right back out when they uh, when they come in and do their portion of it. We see it over and over again. I mean, they put it, we put it in, somebody else takes it out. They take it out, we put it in. It's just, it's this yin and yang back and forth on project completion. And I think, I'm not against it, I'm not against the air quality issue of it, but I think that if we can delay this from happening a little bit, until the process evolves, we may be able to come together with something better. If I might, I, I want to apologize. I should have included an aerial photo. I think it might have helped me illustrate the issue. I, I understand your uh, your position, Councilman Reggie. Uh, about half of the road extension proposed here is not adjacent to the Sage Ranch development. It is uh, the Sage Ranch development extends eastward only to the west boundary of the high school. Um, and so there is an entire quarter section of roadway between the west edge and the east edge of the high school uh, that that may or may not be possible. I mean, 
we do traffic studies all the time to look at, I mean, this is what Walmart's doing, right? They're building improvements even away from the, the street right next to their store because those improvements were needed to deal with the anticipated traffic associated with the store. We're doing that study right now for Sage Ranch, but there's no direct nexus uh, for that, at least for that section of road that is not immediately adjacent to Sage Ranch uh, to make that connection opinion. Uh, I think I might also suggest that you talk to some of the parents, uh, kids that go to high school, uh, about whether that additional road is needed now. Because I, you know, I would push back against your your comment about being suspicious of the nature of things. Like I, I have heard for years now about the need to extend Dinian for circulation purposes out there, um, and so. Uh, Anyway, that would be my response to you. I ask you to consider that in your thought process. I, I want to say that I have a grandson that goes to the high school, and this year I'm going to have two grandsons. So I'm over there two or three days a week, and when I pick them up and I go down Denison and go that way, I slam on my brakes because every high school kid that has an SUV who thinks it might want a four wheel whips right off onto that dirt road, and my biggest fear is not dust. My biggest fear is a single car rollover because there's big bumps in it, they hit the bumps, they go crazy. You, you'd have to go over there and watch them. It scares me. So if um, this is the only way we can get it paved to make it safer, then I'd be all in favor of that. Do you have any Yes, uh, I travel that road a lot uh, when I lived up in that area in Heritage Jokes, and it's a freeway. And I agree with this that, you know, like Jay said, there's the city maintenance yard, and there is quite a bit of room that's not going to stage mark about stage ranch is not going to come to. So there's probably, I'd say, almost a half a mile that, if I remember right. Well, you said half, half of the proposed project yeah. is and half isn't. Yeah, that's but roughly plus or minus. Yeah. yeah. It is, it's like busy, you know, after 4th of July, all the people that come down yeah. from over there. That's their way. That's the way I used to go home, you know. But it's just uh, it's crazy out there. Yeah. In time, you can get your money back from the state and the government. If this is competitive, if we have a project ready to go, you do it at the time. It's smart. So I'll make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Moved and seconded to approve the congestion mitigation and air quality program funding grant. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Let the record show up. Yeah, I'm aye. Okay, 5 vote. Number 18. Mayor, council members, this is the final item I have for you tonight. This one's a little unique, um, so let me do my best to explain it briefly for you. This is also a congestion mitigation air quality grant funding application. Um, uh, but this one is for Highway 58 truck climbing lanes uh, outside of the city limits of the city of Tashkent. So as background, I think this is where it's important. Uh, Mayor uh, Pro Tem uh, Smith, city staff, and Kern Cog have been spending now an extensive amount of time working with Caltrans District 9 and somewhat with Caltrans District 6 um, because the boundary between those two districts is Caliente, in case you didn't know that. Uh, talking about the issue of truck climbing lanes on eastbound 58 coming up roughly between General Hill Road and, and 202 Tucker Road. Um, Caltrans has been working on uh, what's known as a PSR, another acronym for your project study report, uh, which is their initial detailed study and costing analysis for the inclusion of additional truck climbing lanes on this route. Um, and uh, they're getting close. They expect to complete that in October, November, December of this year. Um, but they have expressed to us that they do not have the next stage of funding um, lined up. And the next stage of funding is uh, PSNAE, another acronym for you, which is um, <laughs> Project Preparation and Environmental Documentation. Um, a project of this nature is, the, the numbers they verbally told me for those truck climbing lanes is $100 million. So this is an extremely sizable project. Um, and so in these conversations that we've been having, there's been uh, an option thrown out there uh, from current Council of Governments staff um, 
um, to consider applying for CMAC funds to, phase the, to fund the next phase of the project, which is about $5 million. Um, to do that, that next, and to keep the project rolling, and the primary purpose would be if we can get through the next phase, then we would be effectively ready to ask for a number of federal and state grants. There are federal and state freight grants, or infra grants, or tiger grants. Uh, you may have seen signs like that up. If you drive all over the state, you may have seen those kinds of grant funding signs out there. But there are monies out there to fund a project of this nature, uh, but we got to get the project a little further along. The problem is, is that you have to have standing with current cog to apply for the money, for CMAC money for that purpose. And so somebody had to step up as a current cog agency and be the one to, to say, well, we, you know, we, want, we want to have some of the CMAC money to do this project, to do the next phase of this project. Uh, and so uh, the, really the only two agencies that maybe logically could have would have been Kern County or us. Uh, you know, and Kern County didn't refuse, but basically said, yeah, I don't think we're going to get to that. Uh, and so we faced a decision, um, and we thought as staff that the project is worthy of our sponsorship. Now, with the sponsorship comes the issue of match. We've been very careful to word this resolution such that the city is not committing to anything financially. We do not believe this is our project to fund, match or otherwise. Um, instead, the expectation is, is that we're, we simply want to get the application in uh, to see if the call board, of which uh, Mayor Pro Tim uh, Smith is a member, uh, would choose to, to grant that much of our allocation CMAC to this next phase of this project. That's a call board decision. But we've got to get an application in the mix for that board to make that decision. Um, and so the expectation would be that we get the project in front of them. If the answer is yes from the call board to, to, to send those funds in that direction, um, the city would then need to enter into an agreement with Caltrans that, that shoved all the money across the table and all the responsibility, both legal and otherwise, across the table to Caltrans that says this is your project to execute in every way, shape, and form. Uh, so that's the concept that I'm presenting to you tonight. Again, this is only a grant application at this stage. Uh, I would ask you not to be too concerned uh, with the issues. If, if we don't get the money, it's a non-issue. Uh, if we do get the money, uh, we have made it clear to Caltrans that, you know, that we will only accept that money if we're in an arrangement that de-obligates us from any actual effort exercise and fully obligates them to take the lead, which they've said, yeah, okay, we get it. You know, we get that if you get $6 million, you're not going to want to spend it. You're going to want us to spend it. So they verbally acknowledge that they get that. So um, these applications, by the way, are due in a couple of weeks. All applications are due by August 15th. So I'm, I'm sorry that I didn't give you more time on that. We've been frantically working to add this to our list of tasks in the last four to six weeks or so. Um, and so I, I'm not able to get this to you sooner. Right? So I realize I'm asking a uh, sizable item. But we believe the truck mining lanes are so significant a project for the benefit of the residents of Tehachapi that, that this is a, a worthy item for us. And so my recommendation is that you adopt a resolution authorizing the filing of an application for congestion mitigation air quality program funding and stating the assurance to complete the project. That concludes my report. It does impact every citizen in Cremona Bakersfield understands completely about truck mining management. My job at the current Council of Governments is to lean on county, city of Bakersfield, other cities to get behind the, the cause. This is not a city of Tehachapi project, but like I said, it had to be a lead agency to get this thing moving. This has been on the burner for 20 years. I've been on that board down there for a long, long time pushing for this. The executive director is behind it. Uh, uh, if we can get the study done and get Caltrans' attention, uh, we would ask them, because uh, like um, Freeman Gulch built that project, I believe it is on the back burner for a couple of years, the next segment. We are hoping that we can divert some of the money from another uh, highway to uh, 58. It will benefit us, but as was noted in a recent uh, meeting I was uh, attended with a representative of the governor's office, and they uh, came down to Bakersfield. They are very uh, involved with bringing up other regions besides the Bay Area, LA, San Diego, and the coast. 
county in California tends to go to those areas. So the inland areas, the central uh, San Joaquin Valley, including us, is on their radar. And from that meeting, we got at least verbal support from the governor's office that this is a priority, not for the Hackney residents, but a regional uh, thoroughfare, and if not a, a, a national significance. Highway 58 is east-west, the, one of the heaviest routes for goods movements. And that's what this is about. So every time, and I brought this up at the meeting, every time they had an Amazon, an Ikea, all these uh, very large Target and, and these uh, distribution centers, that just adds exponentially the amount of trucks on 58. The Caltrans is not addressing them. So that's what I'm doing down there, is getting their attention. And uh, I've got several cities on board that it doesn't really impact them. However, like Arvin, it does. They have an IKEA uh, distribution center on the I-5 at the grid, uh, base of the grapevine. It comes from Arvin up on 223 and get on the 58. So it's, it's a very uh, regional project, and uh, I, I totally support it. But we'll be getting in and out of this. So I'll make a motion to approve.
program funding grant application, say aye. 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 Opposed? Madam Mayor, I will see. Okay. Thank you. Um, that was four yeas and one abstention. Thank you. Um, you don't have any uh, council reports? Um, in our area, there are, we, our fire hydrant replacement program going on by our water department on Bamboo Court and on Mr. Smith's district on Commercial Way. And this is going to help during the fire season by maintaining these fire hydrants properly. Also, and it was brought up earlier, we have a new sweet street sweeper. If you have not noticed, it's more efficient and it's able to dump quicker and cover streets and medians, which a lot of you I'm sure have seen on Tucker and so on and so forth. And it is replacing our 20-year-old machine that is no longer in compliance. So um, there's a method to the madness there. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I just have uh, one comment that came to me from uh, a member of the uh, community regarding the new striping at the 202 uh, Valley Boulevard intersection right there, Powers, Jack in the Box. The, the right turn lane going out 202 past Radio Shack, past McDonald's, that right turn lane, which is now new, it is shortened up and narrowed via the new two left turns that are coming down Tucker. There was a truck that was stuck there the other day. There was traffic that was backed up at the left turn arrow and the 18 wheeler couldn't get around the corner because of the narrowing of that that right hand lane. And uh, it's, I, I think it was, well, obviously it was unintentional, but by increasing the two left turn lanes, uh, we now have narrowed that down for the anybody turning right on the 202 going out of town. An 18 wheeler just can't make that because of a car being there in the, I guess it would be in the northernmost left turn lane. It's very, very narrow. Other than that, I don't have anything else down there. Okay. Oh, um, well, I have two things. One thing I would like to say that there were four of us council members yesterday at the old timers picnic. There were more old timers than I've ever seen. There were over 400 RSVPs and the place was packed and I didn't see very many empty chairs. And we had the high school football team served the meal and I've never got my meal that fast. I, I just wanted to commend them. We all gave them a donation, but um, the whole team didn't show up, so those who did were hustling, and they would take the food out and run back and get some more plates and run out again. I mean, it was amazing. Usually, um, old timers are cranky, including me, I guess, you know. They see food going by like this, and they, they get irritated, but I didn't hear one complaint about the food. It was a very nice event. Okay. Regarding the old times picnic, just got some really nice uh, compliments uh, from people, a lot of old timers and new people come here, how they really like how the city's coming along. And uh, they, I got a lot of accolades from people saying they're doing a good job at the city, keep it up. So I'm just passing that along. My wife's uh, class of 69 had their 50th uh, high school reunion and they had it at Kelsey's restaurant. Uh, they opened it up because they got all their uh, permits now are finalized, so they're going to be opening soon. I think it, uh, maybe Festival Weekend and yeah. other. So it's a good drive around. The staff was really tickled pink to be opening up and serving the class of 69 and uh, 35 some people there. It was a lot of fun. And uh, so look forward to them opening back up. It's going to be a lot of fun having that back open. And real quickly, I'd like to say that recent things that have gone on in District 5, we've had water line repairs and street, uh, street patching in the auto blend track, and thanks to Public Works for that. There was a water leak at Boyer Park, 
that was creating issues with the water fountains, that's been repaired. And as we prepare for school, if you've noticed, um, there's street striping going on everywhere. And that's great. It's, it's earlier than, than sometimes. And thank you, Public Works. Um, and the areas around Tompkins and the high school and crosswalks and everything have been taken care of. So with that, we are going to adjourn to closed session. If any decisions are made to be announced publicly, the city attorney will return to this room to announce them. Thank you.